Welcome to Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. Here's your pastor and host, Dr. Frida Cruz. We always appreciate you joining us on Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and today I would like to welcome author, conference speaker, and former host of the nationally syndicated television program, Freedom Today, Robin Bertram, who is joining me to discuss her book titled, Hidden Treasures, subtitled, Finding Hope at the End of Life's Journey. Many people on any day that dawns are facing life-threatening diseases, terminal illness, and long-term care for either themselves or family members who might have few resources to rely on in these difficult times. Based on experience derived from 25 years of prayer ministry, Robin provides insight and guidance to equip patients, family members, and friends to walk through these challenging times with foresight, looking for and expecting to see God at work in comforting and sustaining, and sometimes in miraculous ways. Please stay with us as Robin and I discuss how God is always with us and reveal the hope that is available as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And Robin, it's great having you back again on Time for Hope. Thank you, Dr. Frida. It's an honor to be with you. I'm very, very uh, glad to be with you today. Well, you've done another great job uh, with this book, um, when I saw who was coming at on this date, I thought, I believe she's been here before. (laughs) And uh, then I began uh, to remember. So uh, the Lord surely continues to bless you in the ministries that he uh, guides you into or calls you into. He has blessed me beyond my belief. It's just been incredible. So I'm very fortunate to be here. So when he, saved you when you were given a life sentence to die soon. He knew the things that he had planned for you to do, didn't he? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And this book was something that he put in my heart 10 years ago. And um, so, you know, when you get an assignment from the Lord, you have to be diligent to complete the work. And finally, it's here. (laughs) And uh, and, and, and it is good. It's I told you even off camera how amazed I was as I uh, went through your book that we're on the same page. Uh, We seem to be, uh, and that's not a surprise when the same God, the same Holy Spirit, the same Son of God, uh, we uh, love, adore, and follow. It's not really, I shouldn't have been surprised. (laughs) It's, it's, it's amazing how the Spirit leads us, isn't it? It is. It Into is. unity and peace. Yes, and you know, uh, I had just uh, my last guest that was here, we actually did two shows on the work of the Holy Spirit. I do believe this because as I was growing up, I grew up in a country church and they were sound and, um, you know, and everything. And it was a tremendous blessing to get to grow up in that time, during that time and in that church. And we had great preachers, great preachers, man, they could just go at it, you know. <laughs> and But I don't remember, even with my faithful school uh, Sunday school teacher, talking about the Holy Spirit. I, it, I believe it is an unusual time for the Holy Spirit to be coming forth. So many are saying that, writing about the Holy Spirit, and uh, I, I just think, it's, well, I know it's God's plan. Yes, and it sounds like we had a very similar background. My dad was a pastor for 50 years. He planted five churches. So I grew up going to a church very similar to what you're talking about. And, you know, we really did not stress the importance of the Holy Spirit. It was not. It it wasn't intentional. it, I, that it was not intentional. They were, I know your father and the pastors that we had would not have intentionally yeah. done anything like that. So it wasn't the time. Right. Uh, God has a timing for everything. Yes. 
And, uh, and he brings clarification. Mm -hmm. You know, he brings understanding and revelation. Right. And I just think we do have a, a deeper understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and how much we need him. Oh. <laughs> well, when we, uh, when we discover that in our walk with the Lord and look back, uh, we, we couldn't have done without uh, the, the work of the Spirit. I mean, even coming to know Jesus Christ is a work of the Holy Spirit of God. He is the one that lets us know we're lost. Uh, he's the one that, uh, and when we cry out, uh, he's the one that reveals mm -hmm. Jesus Christ to us uh, and takes that word, come unto me all you that are heavy, uh, what is it, laden. and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. People just have, I'm hoping we can really get it out in a strong way so that they realize these things that they learn out of God's Word and His promises that they are able to believe and then the directions that are coming actually from a work of the Holy Spirit of God. Absolutely. Dr. Frieda, without the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says He's our comforter. So when we go through trials or tribulations, when our hearts are saddened or we've experienced loss, He brings us comfort. And if we don't know Him, we can't possibly experience the comfort that He offers. You know, sometimes uh, in deal, and you, you, you like I deal personally with a lot of people, and uh, sometimes it's just the time uh, to say and pray, as I pray with them, that the Holy Spirit for the time being will just comfort them. Yes. Just, yes. just flood their soul with comfort. <laughs> and he uh, does. And he does, <laughs> absolutely does. Yes, just right. like he's done with, for me today with all of the things that happened to uh, <laughs> the, the evil one, just thought he had it made today, yes. I can tell you that. <laughs> but God is always, I always say to God, you know what, uh, you're stronger uh, you, and, and, uh, and you can undo what he's trying to do and you can keep him from doing what he's trying to do. <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, he never wins. That's right. That's right. And that's, it brings such peace to our heart, doesn't it? Oh, when we yes. understand his love, his comfort, his peace is there for, for us to freely, freely take. And I love that. I want us to be able to give that out to my viewers today. Yes, there are those, and we'll be reading uh, from one or two of them later, um, there are those that are, are, I had someone call me on my way in this morning, and I have Bluetooth so I can talk and, <laughs> and uh, drive, and, um, and I uh, was able uh, to uh, pray with them for comfort. They were so troubled, and they had reason to be. It wasn't a makeup thing on their part, and uh, so just that for the time being, we can't think straight or know what to do next until we do get that comfort and that peace from the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. It is a, it's God's gift to us, and we just have to understand it and embrace it. Embrace it, mm -hmm. right. And also, as it were, uh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, accept it. Yes. Uh, and, and go to, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do yes. uh, and is directed by the Heavenly Father to do with and for and in us. And so that brings me to your book, uh, Hidden Treasures. Uh, and these, uh, you've pointed out in your book, these hidden treasures you want to talk about are within us. Yes. They're within our body, they're within our soul, and they're within our spirit that bears witness with the Holy Spirit. So um, when we think of these hidden treasures, I want to quote something out of your book, okay? It says, when you understand who you are in Christ and what is truly inside of you, it's the Spirit of God that's yes. inside of yes. us. <laughs> uh, people, even people that have been saved don't realize that. 
at salvation, when Jesus Christ comes in, the, uh, he brings the Holy Spirit into the, the spirit of our uh, mind, so to speak. And um, so, which is whole, truly inside of you, you will be able to handle the trials the tragedy, the struggles and difficulties that may be ahead of you. And we never know, do we, from no. one day to the next. That awful thing on the news this morning, of uh, that awful shooting. Uh, I think 11, uh, 11 or 12 people were shot in a place that they thought was one of the safest places they could have been. Yes, ma'am. You never know. The Word of God says, no man is guaranteed tomorrow. And sometimes I think we fail to prepare because we think we'll be here forever. But the Word of God tells us something different, that we're, we don't have that guarantee. So we have to start today. We have to start today with the Holy Spirit working inside of us, knowing who we are in Jesus Christ. Yes, and I like that. Of course, I was a licensed professional counselor uh, for 25 years, and uh, I uh, and we dealt with that you're taught a lot about that, uh, and also we, I dealt with it a lot about yourself. Uh, you know, who are you? Who am I? And uh, so on and so forth. And once we're in Christ, uh, it changes that question, actually. We are a child of God. Yes. Isn't that Wonderful. Beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. It's yeah. exciting to know. Yes. It's an exciting way to live, letting the Holy Spirit just lead and guide us yes. day by day. Day by day. <laughs> They're telling me it's time for a break, and we'll be right back. We were summoned in the middle of the night to my grandparents' home, where we learned that my maternal grandmother was critically ill. Although a physician was summoned and arrived at my grandmother's bedside, she died within a few short hours in the feather bed that I had slept in with her many times. I was 12 years old at the time, but the scene was forever sealed in my memory. A central focus of the memory is of my mother's immediate and profound grief. She wailed and sobbed unashamedly because her mother and best friend had just died. She instinctively realized her unprecedented loss. The next few weeks were very difficult for my mom because her world had changed forever. She had passed into what is sometimes referred to by grief therapists as a barren presence. When we lose significant loved ones, they leave a void in our lives, an empty space that no one else can ever fill. Was life ever the same for my mom, her siblings, my grandfather, and the grandchildren? No. Am I saying that the death of my grandmother crippled all of us for the rest of our lives? No, but I am saying that our lives changed in significant ways. There were no more big Sunday dinners, we now call them lunch, at Grandma's house, where we gathered with our aunts, uncles, cousins to enjoy her fried chicken and we children got the drumsticks, and pear cobbler. And after lunch, we enjoyed playing until dark caught us, while the adults enjoyed sitting and watching from the old-fashioned southern front porch. We still had Grandpa, and we tried to have family get-togethers, but Grandma was gone, and soon we realized we couldn't make things the way they were before she died. We had moved into what is today referred to as a new normal. When we experience significant loss, the goal should not be to get over the loss. Instead, it should be to incorporate the loss into our lives by learning to accept the reality of loss and grief as a part of life and allow it to teach and transform us. 
And when we and our loved ones have a relationship with God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we can live with the anticipation of being reunited with them when we die or when Christ returns. Thanks for hanging in there with us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Robin Bertram, and we're talking about her book. She and I are discussing her book and the things that she has written about. She's done a great job with this book. I encourage you to make sure you get a copy because we only get to touch the tip of the iceberg during our time on Time for Hope and it's titled Hidden Treasures. And then the subtitle, uh, I believe I gave in the introduction, Finding Hope at the End of Life's Journey. And that, of course, has to do with death, doesn't yes, it? Yes, uh, It is, you were mentioning that some things that we, we don't think about ahead of time from day to day and take today for today. But one of the things that stays with us almost is, as soon as we can put two and two together uh, is that th there's going to come a time when we die. Yes, that, yes. Yeah, that everybody at some time or other dies. Dr. Frieda, this is what I believe. Our, our faith defines our life. Our faith defines our death. And our faith defines everything in between. And so I, I believe uh, as I sat down to write this book, I really wanted people to do some introspection to find how the gifts that God has placed in their hearts. Because truly, when you know the gifts you have, then you can help other people through their time of trial. Yeah. And I think that's so important. It's an important aspect of the book. So I start out with looking inward. When we know what, we're, what we have inside, then we can be a blessing to others. And you then mean what we have inside spiritually? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, coming yes. from the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. ma'am. When we have all those... Uh, uh, when we know our gifts, our talents, our calling, that's when we become a blessing to others. So I think that's really important. The Word of God says this in Isaiah 45, 3. The Lord said, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, mm -hmm. so that you will know I'm the Lord God of Israel who summons you by name. And I think what a beautiful scripture to remind us how intimate and loving our Heavenly Father is. Mm -hmm. But we don't just stumble on these treasures. I always remind people there's another side to it, and that is their responsibility and what they are to do, as it were, to find these hidden treasures that we're talking about. God wants us searching for them because in the process, we, we get to know and love Him more and more and more, and our relationship with Him becomes more intimate. Uh, and uh, in searching for the things that He says we are and can and can have. Yes, ma'am, I love that. And that's part of this book, The Hidden Treasures Aspect, because we do have a part to play. Um, the Word of God tells us if we seek after Him, we will find Him. Him. And I think that's part of our, our journey is really to find, as we find Him, we find us. Mm -hmm. We find all the things that He has prepared for us, mm -hmm. whether it's our calling, our mission, our duty. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it was a, this book was a hidden treasure for me. Mm -hmm. I remember Dr. Frieda being at the altar at a time of prayer. And when I got up, the Lord showed me three distinct families that I had worked with that had suffered through long-term illness. And I would I walked with each of the families. And during that time, I remember the Lord just speaking to my heart so clearly, Robin, I want you to share what you learned through that journey. And that's how this book was birthed. Uh -huh. It is a wonderful uh, ministry to get to share. You, you hate to think in terms of saying wonderful when someone is facing death, yes. uh, but 
it, it should be a wonderful uh, perspective when we know Jesus Christ. And then in ministering to them, and I've been um, working with someone recently that's trying to learn all of this, so to speak, because they are in a position uh, of serving and visiting in the hospital and that kind of thing, that when they when their time is very limited, uh, that we, we it has to be uh, noted, and it has to be brought up about their relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the most important question you can ask your loved one. When they're suffering, when they're going through these trials and tribulations, whether it's a long-term illness, a divorce, a loss of a child, mm -hmm. whatever the situation mm -hmm. might be, the, the best question you can ask is, do you know where you're going to be when you close your eyes on this earth? Do you know where you will be? You know, I like, Robin, I like to say it this way too. Do you know that you know? Yes. <laughs> Yes, and there is a knowing. The Word of God yeah. tells us we can know for yes. certain, doesn't it? Yes, and that's what is so wonderful about God. He doesn't leave anything out for us to guess about. Right, and it, that's, what, Dr. Frieda, that's what brings us peace. When we're facing long-term illness or, or potential death, you know, I have a, my mother is 93, and we've been so blessed to have her on this earth so long. And, and you know, her journey is coming to an end, but most of the time, the people ask the same questions. What are we gonna do without our loved one? How are we gonna get through? What are we gonna do to survive? And really, we need to focus on those things when we're healthy, when we're strong, when we, when we don't have those trials, so that we can make decisions that are important. Mm -hmm. And the first decision is what you said, it's salvation. Mm -hmm. That Jesus lived, he died, he was buried, he arose on the third day, he sits at the right hand of God the Father. Right. And the Word of God says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be He's saved. saved. Yeah. And that's the easiest message we can share with our loved mm -hmm. one. In the book, I write about uh, firm foundation mm -hmm. because without that firm, that yes, church, yes. Uh -huh. without that firm foundation, we can't possibly mm -hmm. make it through the trials. No. We can't no. possibly even help a loved one that's struggling. And so I wrote this book for healthcare workers, mm -hmm. for ministry workers, mm -hmm. for people in the church, in every family. Chaplains. Yes, chaplains. Uh, we have some chaplains in India that are joining us uh, on, with uh, On Time for Home. Yes, any, yeah. any family has someone that's dealing with this issue mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Someone in your neighborhood or someone in your church. Yes. And they need these answers because God gave them to mm -hmm. us in His Word. Yes, I just lost a neighbor um, that I was pretty close to, he and his wife, and uh, he was taking dialysis and uh, had taken it for a long time for his kidneys, and he just wore out at it. He decided one day, I'm not taking another one. Uh, and um, then, uh, so he, uh, of course, it shocked everybody and shocked his wife and so on and so forth because it meant he would not live long and uh, so on and so forth. And I got to talk with him about it and about his decision. He was very firm in his decision. And yet I went on and talked with him about you know, uh, his relationship with the Lord. He was very, he stood on a firm foundation actually uh, in, you know, even with that. And so we all began to just rejoice with him that he was coming to the end of his life, but that he had so much to look forward to. And he didn't mind expressing it and saying it that way and making all the plans and uh, so on and so forth. And it was I've had that more than once, and it's always a wonderful experience to, to walk through with uh, with somebody. So death at the at the end of our life's journey, if we have that hope in Jesus Christ, it cannot. It doesn't have to be a bad experience. We can yes. look at it, you know. With hope. With hope. <laughs> I love that word, hope. Yes. And uh, so anyway, uh, I've got 
we're, we're going to soon be ending, and I've got a couple of things I need to share uh, from a couple of my uh, viewers uh, before we go off. And the first one reads, Dear Dr. Frieda, please pray for me. I want to obey God, but I am feeling so lost and confused about my life and what I am supposed to do. I believe God gives second chances. Pray that this depression would go away and that I would have friends that love God to spend time with and they she will need those, won't she? Also, that I would really trust God in everything. This person is expressing what any of us could express and ask for. We encourage you to send in your prayer requests. We never miss a one. We lift every one of them up to our Heavenly Father who is able to intervene in His way and in His time. Um, on Monday morning when we're in our uh, media church worship services, we, uh, we take these prayer requests up with the Lord and we know, we know and trust Him uh, to intervene and the way he chooses to intervene with them. So if you haven't sent yours in, we greatly encourage you to do so. And then I have a, uh, an encouraging note come in. Dear Dr. Frieda, thank you for teaching and preaching God's Word. Enclosed is a donation to your ministry. Praise the Lord. May God bless you, your family, and I appreciate adding my family to that, and your ministry, and I appreciate that, and certainly appreciate the donation that you sent along with that encur uh, encouraging uh, letter or wh however way it, it came to me. I encourage you to ask the Lord, seek His will about what He would have you do about uh, helping us uh, with our finances in this ministry. We can use your financial help. I'm not about to say otherwise. It is true. God provides for us, though. He's always provided for this ministry, and I have no doubt he will continue to do so, but maybe he would like you to join us in that way also. And then the last thing I ask is to make sure you tune in again next week on Time for Hope. Thank you for watching Time for Hope a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. We offer a free fact sheet with more information on today's topic. Call or write us to get your copy today. The resource we are offering this week is available for a donation of at least $16 to the Time for Hope ministry. Any additional donation you wish to send will be greatly appreciated. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support the Time for Hope ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you send a gift to Time for Hope, you are joining in the ministry to which God has called us. It will also enable us to inform and inspire viewers to become students of God's Word, and grow closer to Him, and in turn, minister more effectively to others as God gives them opportunity. Look for Dr. Frieda's scriptural devotions on our Time for Hope TV ministry Facebook page. And to see booklets Dr. Frieda has written on such topics as grief and loss, marriage and prayer, call us or visit our website, timeforhope.org. Until next time, have a great week, and remember, it is time for hope.